Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. Hey, in this video I wanted to break down some of my best advice on how to get long kill streaks. Specifically, we ran out of metals, metals in uh, in the Crucible right now. So, it is definitely a different atmosphere. It's a different climate than what we've been used to in the past. Shadowkeep introduced some different changes to the matchmaking systems, different changes to the uh, the UI and the landing page for the Crucible and the different playlists. And, um, you know, I've given my feedback on that separately, and I won't rehash those things. Um, sort of do this as a continuation. So in this environment that we're in, whether we like it or not, there are ways we can optimize our chances at success. And so I want to chat about those things in this video. I've got three main things that are going to help you out. One of them, these are three main categories, I suppose. The first category is items that reset things, right? Resetting items in your build. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, anything that can reset your health, anything that can reset your magazine, right? Those things are very, very helpful in the current climate that we're in. They were helpful previously, but they're even more so now because you're in an environment that's much less forgiving when you make mistakes because everybody's using something that's holding their hand these days. Everybody's using something that's holding their hand, making it easier for them to get kills. And that's not throwing shade at players. That's throwing shade at Destiny. Let me be clear about that. I am throwing shade at Destiny when I say that. I'm not throwing shade at players. They are uh, players I don't hold to my standard of gaming. <laughs> right? It's not my job to impose stipulations and rules on how they're allowed to play their game. Uh, but I, I, I definitely have standards for the, the way that I want Destiny to play. So you may hear me say things like that that seem sort of cutting. I don't want to be uh, clear that my uh, my sarcasm or those cutting comments uh, are not directed towards any individual players. Um, but sometimes I may say things that are a little bit cutting to Destiny because I think that Destiny could be better. And I'm passionate about Destiny. I love Destiny. So that's why I say those things. But moving on. So uh, things that reset health, things that reset your magazine... That is why currently Wormhusk is super popular. Arc Battery, super popular because it's a resetting thing. It resets the fight, it resets your health, it gives you an overshield, makes it super squirrely, and uh, it's definitely aggravating to play against players using that combination. I find it super aggravating to play against those players because I feel like I have to kill them two times to kill them one time, if that makes sense. It's like I get them down to nothing, just rolls behind cover and jumps right back out. And guess what? He broke my aim assist, so i got to reacquire the target again. Uh, and on top of that, he's got an overshield and full health now. It's like, well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so you can out damage somebody two to one and still lose the gunfight, and that sucks in a shooter. So that's why that's so popular right now, because that combination is a resetting item. It's a resetting build that resets the fight, resets your health, gets you back in there. It's super forgiving. You can, it's it's uh, forgiving for bad decisions. You can make a bad decision and roll as a way of saying, well, scratch that, I made a bad choice, but I don't have to deal with the consequences of it, I'll just roll, right? That's why it's super popular right now. Same thing with One-Eyed Mask. One-Eyed Mask, you made a bad decision a lot of times. You got shot, you took damage, um, you know, you're able to back off, but the thing that it does is it resets, if you get the kill, right, resets your health, gives you an overshield. It's a resetting item. That's why it's super popular on top of the wall hacks and free information. Um... Personally, I don't use those things because I find them, and again, this is not throwing shade at players, um, the way that I prefer to play, I like to play in a way that I feel rewarded for the kills that I get. I do not like the feeling when I win an engagement and I know for a fact I shouldn't have won it, but the game just held my hand through that fight. The game held my hand, right? The things that I had on were like, you know, we're, I, we know you're making bad decisions, but... We're going to help you end up on top in this gunfight regardless of it. I don't like that feeling. So uh, I've been gravitating towards Crimson lately in lobbies where I feel like I really need to go for it. Uh, I like Crimson because even while it has a suboptimal time to kill in relation to a lot of other mainstream primaries out there, even though it has a suboptimal time to kill, it's still pretty competitive in that department. But on top of that, when I win my gunfights... It rewards precision and accuracy by resetting my magazine. And so I can chain kill after kill after kill after kill. And you saw this in maybe some of the previous videos and the clip I posted on Instagram. I was able to get, what was it, 7 kills in 20 seconds without ever reloading my Crimson. <laughs> Never reloaded it. I just kept pulling the trigger over and over again. It's 7 kills. And uh, it's just such a good feeling because it's resetting my magazine when I get these precision kills. And it's also resetting my health every time I get a kill, whether it's precision or not. It's uh, giving me health regeneration. And I love that because it helps me play the way that I like to play, which isn't passive. Um, I, I, I prefer to play pretty aggressively. 
Um, and that helps me out because it can help me reset my health and my magazine without having to pull out of the gunfight, you know. I can step into a 1v2, and with other weapons equipped, a lot of times I can secure the first kill, but I don't have enough time to swap to another weapon or reload my weapon and continue on to kill two before I'm dead. Crimson lets me get that first kill, get some health back uh, as a reward for winning my kill, uh, winning my engagement, and it gives me uh, ammo back in the magazine so I can just go straight into uh, engagement number two. I love that feeling. It's why I really like Crimson right now. Uh, it's another one of the reasons that I like using Dragon Shadow because Dragon Shadow gives you uh, basically a quick draw and snapshot with Wraith Metal Mail, but on top of that, one of the more important things is that it gives you uh, instant reload on all your weapons, not just the one you have out. And so you can run the dodge. I, this is one of my probably the most common comments I get on the YouTube channel is, how is he using that dodge and reloading his guns? That's not the reload dodge. Well, it's because I use Dragon Shadow as my primary exotic uh, armor piece on my Hunter, because it's a great way of resetting mid-fight, mid-engagement. I can get a kill, or even in the middle of a kill that I haven't finished yet, I can dodge to break uh, aim assist and then come back up with an, uh, you know, a weapon with a full magazine. And I love that. I love being ready. I hate having to reload my weapons mid-fight. It's a terrible feeling. It's really stressful. And so I run Dragon Shadow so I don't have to experience that anymore. It can just reset my ammo, reset my magazines uh, when I do that dodge roll. So the next category of things that are really helpful for getting long kill streaks. Uh, the first category was items that reset. The second category is things that are threat deterrents. Things that keep threats off of the battlefield, right, out of play. Things that keep threats out of play. Uh, I'm talking specifically, uh, for example, things like Thorn. Thorn, uh, Monarch, these things apply a burn. And it forces players to back off. Uh, bows in particular, sniper rifles even, things that can, uh, Ariana's Vow, things that do a lot of damage up front that makes players afraid to commit to a gunfight. So if somebody peeks on you and you hit them with a Monarch, um, I know people have mixed feelings about that weapon in particular, but Monarch, while, while it is not a meta weapon, so to speak, it's nowhere near the top of the most used items in the game, it is really effective, and I think most people have caught on to that by now. It is a really effective weapon because uh, it, it forces players to either run away or take cover. Uh, it's like a suppressive weapon. Or, if they choose to challenge... You can hit them with just about anything else, and they will die, right? Um, you don't have to do a lot of damage to clean up a Monarch kill with the burn on them and the amount of damage that Monarch can do, whether it's a body shot or headshot, it doesn't matter. It does a significant amount of damage. So the, these are great threat deterrents. They keep threats off the battlefield, and it helps limit your engagements to being something that's a little bit more of a manageable pace, assuming you are hitting your shots. And Thorn's the same way. Thorn is great in a couple of fronts. One is the burn. It's sort of psychological warfare. Sometimes people don't realize that they got tagged, or when they do get tagged by a primary, they're not thinking, was it a headshot, was it a body shot, how many shots does he need to land now in relation to how many I need to land. Most people aren't doing that math in their heads, um, and so they'll re-challenge even if they're tagged. But Thorn, Thorn keeps them off the battlefield because it's a constant reminder on their screen, a constant reminder that you are taking damage, you are actively taking damage. Right now, you are taking damage. And so that sort of, it's a mental game, and it helps keep people out of play, keeps them off the battlefield, they like to recover before they re-peak on you if they have the chance to do so. Um, Aaron and Till, Wise and Rebuke, also uh, are among the things that hit really, really hard. Um, <clears throat> those things are great threat deterrents. I hate. I, <laughs> I really don't like them. I think they they handhold in this game too much. And this is coming from a guy that loves fusion rifles. And I know that I'll get pushback on this, but I firmly believe that Aaron Till and Wise and Rebuke hold the player's hand way too much. They are way too forgiving, but darn if they are not excellent threat deterrents. If I hear an Aaron Till charging up, a lot of times I will not peek that lane. If I hear Wise and Rebuke charging up, I will not peek that lane. So, or if I'll just peek it very briefly and then back in, out and back in, out and back in, but I won't ape forward. It's a threat deterrent. It keeps me away. It keeps me suppressed. And uh, if they hit me, and in the off chance it does not kill me, I'm most likely going to break for cover instead of staying exposed to, you know, an Aaron Till or a Wisen Rebuke or allowing them to switch to a primary and clean me up. I'm probably going to dip and try and get my health back if I can. So it's a great threat deterrent. I don't like them. I think they hold your hand too much. I think there are changes that need to be done to those weapons to make them more balanced so that getting kills with them is actually, uh, you know, a reflection of player skill. 
And I, I, I do not say that to insult anybody. If you main Aaron Till, listen, I've got over 10,000 kills on my Aaron Till. That's why I can speak definitively and authoritatively when I say it is so easy to get kills with that gun. It is seriously just super forgiving. But uh, not, that's not here. Let's move on. So threat deterrence and resetting items. The last category is things that are consistent. Things that are forgiving. Now, forgiving in Destiny 2 kind of translates directly to things that have, uh, like, high aim assist um, or don't require a full... Uh, things like fusion rifles. Fusion rifles are kind of forgiving because you don't even have to land all your projectiles sometimes. You just have to land some of them and they'll go down. Um, and I love fused rifles. Um, I'm just saying it like it is. I love I love using, like, um, the main ingredient. Main ingredient still a pretty forgiving weapon, even though it gets outclassed by Aaron Till... And uh, Wisen Rebuke. I think it's a really fun gun. I think it's pretty consistent with the right rolls, and it's a great it's a great option if you want to use something that's going to be a little bit more forgiving. It doesn't require perfect precision, but you are going to need to use it pretty well. I think uh, that's a great uh, alternative. Otherwise, things that have high aim assist, snipers with high aim assist. Um, I think uh, like well, Twilight Oath has Twilight Oath is is a relatively easier sniper to use if you've got um, like that curated rolls is really good. Very consistent. Uh, hand cannons that have high aim assist. There's some hand cannons out there that have a, a crazy amount of aim assist as well. Um, Bygones is a really forgiving archetype, especially if you get the right rolls on it. You don't necessarily have to land all precision hits in order to get pretty optimal time to kill. Uh, last Word can be pretty forgiving. I'm a huge fan of the Last Word, but um, and this isn't a criticism, but Last Word also is, is a really forgiving weapon because you don't have to hit your headshots. You can go pop, 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 right, and get four body shots and kill somebody. And you don't have to land a single pre precision hit to kill someone really, really fast. Recluse is a really forgiving weapon, too, especially if you have the perk up. Uh, again, you don't have to hit precision hits. Uh, you can just you can spam body shots if you want. It is a really consistent weapon. And there's a lot of weapons in the game right now that are, that are really consistent and uh, are really forgiving. So those are the three things that are going to be the most success right now. And I've never been one to promote meta gameplay. Um... You know, I, I just I like to use other stuff. I'm not not one to promote that, and I'm not trying to say everyone go out there and sweat your junk off. Um, but if you want to get the most success right now in the current climate, here's the reality. Um, if you're experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing, I have to try a lot harder all the time. There's really not a lot of casual lobbies out there that I get into. Every now and then I'll get one, um, but most of my lobbies are pretty competitive. Most of my lobbies have multiple legend ranked players. Uh, several on Broken Seal, stuff like that, because most of the places that I play are skill-based matchmaking. When I do play the connection-based matchmaking in the lower right, it's so small and minuscule and down to the right with no... There's no text on it. It's just two swords and a ghost, right? People don't know what that means. Most of the more casual player base, they're not going down there for connection-based matchmaking because it's not front and center. The game isn't actually trying to push them towards that playlist. It looks like an afterthought. So the only people in there really are veteran Crucible players. Who know what that is and know what it's about so most of the people that I encounter in there are actually veteran players anyways so it ends up being I don't get punished by skill based matchmaking but I get punished there by uh, lobby balancing so the lobby balancing will stack the teams usually against me so I have to no matter where I go I have to try pretty hard right now so I, I find myself using things that are a little bit less off meta right so if I, if I was typically going in with things that are, you know, two to three tiers below S tier, now I'm going like one to two tiers below, you know, or uh, maybe even S tier items at this point. It, it just depends on the lobby. So so I think that's the current climate that we're in. I think we just have to deal with it, you know. Be, we have to adapt until different changes are made. But right now, that's just the way that it is for me at least. I don't know if, if your experience is the same as mine, but I would actually be really interested to hear what you have to say about that. But thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Um, I did a bunch of 1v1s with MTASH on PC, and uh, I'm excited to share some of the gameplay from that as well on YouTube. And I uh, hope to see you some, uh, sometime around the uh, Facebook stream as well, fb.gg slash thetruevanguard. And I uh, hope to see you there. All right, bye-bye.